when we say particles collide to create virtual particles, mm. do they really fist bump each other down at the Planck scale, occupying the same voxel at the same time, or do they just get close enough and then, you know, magic happens? Great question. They get close enough. As an undergraduate, I learned some about a very technical, silly term called the impact parameter. Love and it. that means that if you have two things coming toward each other, how close do they have to be before they impact each other, affect each they other? They don't have to touch they each other. They don't actually have to touch. If, wait, so like if I did this to you, right? I'm not touching hey, you. I'm not touching you. He's not touching me. <laughs> wait, wait, Stop wait, wait, wait. not touching you. me. I'm wait, annoying wait, you. I, we, let's go a layer deeper. All right. We did a whole episode of Cosmos on this. Because of electromagnetic forces, which hold your body together, when I go up to Charles and I touch him, if you actually analyze what's going on at the molecular and atomic level, I'm not actually touching him. There are forces in a field surrounding the particles, and it's the forces that are bumping off each other. But I and, and this impact parameter exists when there are fields that surround the objects that Hang are coming near each other. I can see my finger, my skin touching that surface. So? Yes. So you're telling me that I'm what I'm seeing at a happen. very microscopic scale. There's something What's between actually, that plastic and there my is skin. space between that plastic and your skin. But what happens is that the uh, fields transfer energy. So your skin still feels as if it is physically touching something. But when that's something fat. coming from the bottle and the bottles coming from the skin. Right. There's so so there is a tiny bit of space in between and there is stuff passing between it. Otherwise your finger would just pass through the plastic. So there's a space, like my, the emotional, is like my emotional relationship with my wife. There's a sliver. Yes. We don't want to get into the- um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, so I love this, I love this what Charles cool. says, because we don't hear that term much, but it's kind of, it's almost self-explanatory. It's the distance within which you can declare there was an interaction between the two objects. And is there a way to, there's a way to measure that? You can put it in the mathematical equations and say, okay, well, I have some force field in my finger. You have some force field in that plastic container. When they come together, how close do they have to be before I feel the force of those container particles pushing on my finger particles? It's, it's more precise than that. So you have two, I'm pulling this out of my 30 year memory. You, 30. you can 30. ask, okay. 30. <laughs> So, so if two objects, two gravitational objects would come by and one just gets pulled a little bit, That's right. you can say, all right, what does that mean? But <laughs> you can define just for conversational and mathematical mm -hmm. purposes, the impact parameter is the distance within which its trajectory will be altered by more than 90 degrees. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So that's why when we talk about say colliding galaxies, the stars in the galaxies actually never hit each other. They it's never touch. Almost never wow. have direct collision. Passes through. But they go by each other. And yes. as they go by, it's like a swarm of angry bees. In fact. And they affect each other. And to the point where there can be an explosion. To the effect where at times you will have an explosion. That's right. So if I'm touching this, yeah. is there a force that's strong enough or can be measured mm -hmm. at which I can push those at magnetic Feel or those feels apart, mm -hmm. and I'm actually touching it. Is it ever possible to eliminate that feel that's between the thing, I'm, my finger and the pen, let's it say? It is almost no. never possible because at there is a limit no. beyond which the math breaks down. You see, in the quantum uh, structure of the universe. By the way, I feel like I'm asking to use the car and he's saying maybe, and my dad's saying, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, no. <laughs> Back up for a minute. Keep it under 30 miles an hour. You'll be all right. Back up. Just story time real quick. Okay. Okay. I'll be reading from Merlin. Do you have some milk? Warm, <laughs> warm milk? Hot cocoa? Can you get some hot cocoa, Alex? Uh, Merlin's tour of the universe. Dear Merlin, is there a chance that another star will one day collide with the sun? Yes. But you should know that if there were just four snails randomly carousing across the continental United States. Snails don't carouse. They, do they? <laughs> snails cruise. Yes. cruise. What are they, alcoholic? <laughs> drug, drug, hey, snails are going. Drug addles. Yeah, it's right? more likely for two of them to accidentally bump into each other 
than it is for another star and the sun Seriously? to collide. Yeah. Yes, and then my then my artist brother drew two snails <laughs> right. colliding here. One of which has a bandana and a gun. <laughs> really weird. The carousing. That's a carousing. So, so there you go. It's mostly empty space. So two galaxies colliding. The stars just pass, but they definitely affect each other. That's gravitation. Right. So if th this this star this star is going by. It's it. There's enough. There is enough energy there that it can cause each to explode. Not necessarily. They'll cause each other to change their trajectories. Yeah. Got it. But. Once every four seconds or so in the whole observable universe, this is an estimate made a few years ago, there is actually a direct collision, okay? It, this is most likely to happen in dense clusters of stars. Very dense. Okay, like globular and clusters. And near the center of the dense cluster. Right, in the center of the star where, say for example, in the space, which is normally say a few light years between me and us and Alpha Centauri, for example, there could be the a million star. stars in that space. Mm -hmm. When the over densities are a million to one compared to say our solar neighborhood, uh, you can actually have stars hitting one another and they could actually explode. But the chances of even a collision causing an explosion are tiny because stars are mostly made out of gas. Mm -hmm. So imagine like a star going through another star, you're basically just having gas clouds smashing into gas clouds and go through. You need the cores. But there are molecules within each gas cloud That's right. that could sort of Collide, they could, no? but then they don't cause a collision because they're so small, yeah. right? They're so low energy. But if you can get the core of a star, <clears throat> hit the core of a star, then now you can talking. actually create a star happening. And you create collisions Let's and explosions. Let's make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. At once every four seconds. You guys are doing crazy somewhere stuff in, in the, the basement. In the somewhere huge in universe. the huge observatory. That's higher universe. than I would have guessed. Nah, yeah, you, okay. I know. You guys are doing crazy stuff in the basement of this place. Let's make that happen.